Hey, what's up? Welcome to my kitchen with garbage lighting. So I've vlogged like me cooking dinner about three or four times now. Not just dinner, but like other whatever, me cooking, me doing food, you know. And I like haven't edited anything. I don't have any editing software. I only have iMovie. And iMovie is fine if you're like just doing video editing, but I don't wanna I don't want to slash know how to deal with iMovie and do audio editing for like say a voiceover so I'm gonna talk and show and show while I talk me cooking dinner and making like my really easy shepherd's pie this is how I have learned a shortcut shepherd's pie I did this a couple times at school and it honestly just made it super easy super quick and super flavorful um, and shepherd's pie is good because it's pretty cheap. I'm making this for me and my dad because my mom is away this week um, and I had today off, thank God, so I'm cooking. Um, yeah, woo. All right, so first order of business is to get out all your ingredients. So today I'm doing carrots. I'm also gonna throw in some green beans. Shepherd's pie is kind of nice because it can be a nice um, dump of things that are in your pantry. So we have green beans that I'm gonna throw in here for some extra veggie. Um, peas, and of course this is my ground turkey. Most people use ground beef, but I have an issue with red meat, so I like to do, no. Um, I'm gonna do an onion, and then for some reason we have really small potatoes, so I've got a bunch of these for my mashed potato on top. Get out. And this is my secret ingredient that flour is currently stepping on. Um, this is what makes everything so flavorful and so easy. Instead of doing a gravy where you might want to add like Worcestershire and then or like do like a roux and start with like butter and then add flour and whatever this is a lot easier because all you do is you dump it right in and it adds all that flavor you can still add spices and herbs if you want but this makes it so easy I get the gluten free because of course I can't eat the gluten but it also makes this easy if you're making shepherd's pie for a gluten free friend you can pick this up instead of having to buy gluten-free flour to make a gravy with. Life hack. Step one is to chop your onions. Step two is to cry while chopping your onions. Ooh, ooh. But they're all minced up and I got a pan warming up over there with some olive oil in it and we're gonna saute these first and then we'll add the carrots. Alrighty, these are two carrots. They've been washed. I did not peel them because I just kind of like how earthy they are when they aren't peeled. What? What? Two peeled carrots washed, cut. I'm gonna bring them over here. My onions are nice and sweated down. This is right here. Along the way, I have salted these veggies and the carrots are starting to soften up, so I'm gonna go in with this turkey. Maybe. Maybe not. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, there it is. In there, sizzling. Okay, so as this is browning over here, I got potatoes peeled and I'm gonna begin to chop them. I also took out like half the bag of peas and I'm letting them just defrost and get to room temperature. And I might have enough veggies. I might not need these, but I might add them anyway. We'll see. So, as previously stated, the turkey is over here browning. And I decided to add a couple of spices. I got sage and thyme here. First season. So we're gonna go with a pinch of salt. And a pinch of pepper. I don't wanna over salt or over season by any means because it's gonna give us a lot of flavor. So I'm gonna add some sage and some thyme, probably like a teaspoon, half a teaspoon of each. It's range in there, I'm not gonna measure, it'll be fine. Potatoes are all set. I have another one on standby just in case I need more. Now, I don't know why I use sage. It's just such an aromatic herb that it makes like anything I add it to taste so homey. <sighs> so good. So there's a couple ways you can go about this. Um, I'm running a little low on time, so I'm going to bring an alternate pot with water in it up to boil. Hi. Gonna bring it up to boil with some salt in it and boil these to get the mash going. Um, you don't have to do it that way, however. 
Um, you could very easily just wait for the meat and the veggies to stop cooking once it's all set, throw it right down into your baking pan, and then use that pot to cook the potatoes. Um, it would cut down on a mess, maybe if you're in like a college dorm, that would be a lot easier for you. I got a little pot waiting to boil, and then I'm just gonna go with my peas right in here. Oh, and I added the green beans. I just went for into the whole pan, and I'm gonna add this now. This looks so good. Bubbles. So, I added the gravy packet, and I added some beef broth. You don't have to use beef broth, you can just use water, or chicken broth, or veggie broth, or whatever. But this is going to help make that delicious gravy. You definitely want to try your food as you're cooking just to make sure that it's salted and peppered adequately or maybe if you want to add you know, more of a different spice. Still leaving these potatoes, but for now, that's the update on this. Once this all gets nice and thick, I'm going to put it right into my baking pan and then we'll go from there. That is so the canned green beans definitely are a little weird. I'm hoping the canned flavor kind of cooks out as it's cooking in here. And also, back to what I was saying, the canned flavor of the green beans is a little weird, as you'd expect. Um, but it should, you know, cook out a little bit as it's simmering in this gravy and then in the oven. Um, yeah, I'm excited. This is coming along and it tastes really good. And that's definitely an easy way to get a lot of flavor in without, you know, having to do a lot of extra work and have a lot of extra ingredients. I'm just waiting on my potatoes. Get ready for it. I'm actually going to add garlic into the mashed potatoes. So you get a nice garlicky bite, a nice savory bite of the meat. And it's perfect. I know I got this hanging out here. It's really steamy, but it's laid fresh, fresh, laid flat in the pan. Don't you dare. There's stuff over here. Cats are like toddlers. Like I'm genuinely not kidding when I say that. I was home alone with these two all day. They drove me insane. I feel like they would kill themselves somehow if I weren't here. Like not on purpose, of course, but just cause they're accident prone. They, they're not smart creatures. The potatoes are done. So they're in there straining and in the pan where they once were is now my butter. And I'm gonna add cream to that. The number one thing you need to do when you're making mashed potatoes and you want them to be good and not like stodgy is heat the butter and heat your milk before you add the potatoes in. If you add the potatoes in and then you just add straight cold cream or milk and butter to them, it's gonna make them kind of like gummy and gross and we don't want that here. Or I'm gonna use granulated garlic, you can also use garlic salt, which again is really good if you don't have an like massive fridge, if you're in like a dorm or something and you have a little mini fridge, this might be a lot better. Cause that's what I did with my roommate we just had little garlic powders. So I'm gonna use granulated garlic. You know, let's use garlic salt or garlic powder um, and just add it right into there. And it'll be perfect. There's nothing better in this world than a well-seasoned mashed potato. So good. I don't know what to say. That's damn good. Kinda looks like it died a bit in this corner, but I tried to smooth it out the best I could. It was really sticking to my spoon, but this is gonna go right in the oven.